Okay, so in this little video here, we're going to consider how the queen is, or how the king is meant to move. And like like all pieces, I mean, the, the king is, is an extremely important piece. And in the game of chess, the, the king really represents you, the player. So chess is, is well known to be a strategic game of, of um, absolute battle. Um, and in, in, the, in all chess games, um, the king is seen as the as the player, and all the other pieces are there to protect the player. If the king is taken in chess, um, in speed chess, the game is over. Um, in, in normal chess, usually we cannot move into a check position where the king is being attacked. And if you you win the game by um, getting your opponent into a position where you're in check and you cannot move out of that check. So you're in checkmate. So for us, um, in our implementation, we want to be able to take the king. Okay, so you're allowed to move into check, and simply your opponent needs to take your king to win the game. So let's have a little look at the board, at, at the type of movements the king, the king can make. So if we go back to our, our little game. Um, now, when I, if I try to move the, the king at the moment, um let me just open up the code first. Um, so the last time we were looking at the queen, we had a if piece name that equals white queen. We don't have a condition here where we're looking at the, the king moving. So we need to just add in a condition to allow the king to move. So we simply say, as I'm sure we all know by now. Um, if piece name dot contains, so we don't care if it's the black king or the white king. I'll save, and we simply make this grab move is equal to true. We save that. I'm going to uh, uh, the compile. And after recompiling, when I run it, I should now be able to move my king anywhere. And the movement of the king itself is a very simple movement. Now, as we know, we can move the king anywhere now, because I've set all moves to be valid moves. But the king is able to move one square in any direction. So just like the queen, the king can traverse along the vertical axis. It can move like a bishop um, or it can move horizontally. The restrictions on the king are that the king can only move one square at a time. So the king is able to move one square at a time. The king is not able to take his own piece or shouldn't be allowed to take his own piece. And when the king lands on a square, um, there has to be at least one square between the opposing king. So if I have this, the opposing king here, the black king out on the board as well, there has to be at least one square between each of these kings at any given time. So if I try to move the king to here, it would be an invalid move because we would be in adjacent squares along a diagonal. Here is an inappropriate move because again, I'm sitting adjacent directly underneath the white king. And here would also be an invalid move because I'm one square along a diagonal away from the white king. Um, I am able to move to this square or to this square, but I cannot take any of my, my own pieces. Okay, now as I said already, in, in normal chess um, or in non speed chess, we wouldn't be able to move into a position where we had um, check. So for example, if we had this position here, I shouldn't be allowed to move my king to here because I would be sitting directly in check by the pawn um, that's, that's sitting in the, in the adjacent square here around the diagonal. So the pawn could take my king. So this square here wouldn't be allowable. I could move up alongside the pawn in which case 
the opposing white king could move down here. Um, and in, in particular, when we move to an end game in chess, there are an awful lot of strategies to be able to protect or attack pawns. Okay, so for the purposes of our, of our little um, continuous assessment, the logic around the king movements are, are quite simple. You can move to any square as long as it's on the board, as long as you're only moving one square at a time, and there's at least one square between you and the opposing king after you've completed your move. Okay, so again, let's have a little think about that for a second. So if we were to consider what that actually means, we can say that the king can move in any direction as long as it's being placed back onto the board and it's only moving one square at a time. So the first test would be very simply if the king is being placed back onto onto the board, we would say if the x movement is equal to one, um, we say or the y movement is equal to one. Um, dot and all other combinations yeah, of moving only one only one square at a time yeah essentially just like a restricted queen. The usual, so we can't take our own piece and there must be one square both kings yeah, after queen. The okay, so some very simple um, logic to wrap around moving the king. The king can move one square in any direction as long as it's being placed back onto the board. And there has to be at least one square between the two kings after the king has completed its movement. Now this movement is exactly like the queen, only you're only allowed to move one square at a time. Okay. So you're moving just like a bishop or just like a rook, but it's only one square at a time. You can take your own piece, you can take your opponent's piece, and there must be at least one square between you and your opposing king. Okay, so that's how the king moves. So it should be relatively straightforward to get the king moving.